Okay, in this video we'll take a look at the Link A12 aircraft bubble sextant and the Fairchild A10A bubble sextant. But first, a brief look at a marine sextant. By the way, I'll include the link to this book before GPS determining your position using celestial measurements, the how and why of celestial navigation. That link will be included in the description. So here's a marine sextant using a sight tube. There's a lanyard around my neck which uh, is protecting the sextant should I drop it and just adjusting the index arm, trying to get an idea of the index error. You read the angle off of the arc and here are the sun shades operating. These are uh, very dense filters. You can put multiple ones in depending. You've got sun shades for the horizon because you're taking the angle from the sun to the horizon. And there's quite a bit of glare off the water. This is the, the index arm marked off in degrees. There's a safety note here. If you use a telescopic sight, it can collect enough energy to instantly damage your eye. Your flinch response will not be quick enough to protect your eye. So you've always got to use the sun shades or use a tube with zero magnification. Your flinch response is adequate using the tube with zero magnification. So here's the telescopic sight, which can be mounted on the sextant, which is good for objects like stars, things like that. With the moon and the sun, it's it's large enough that it's easy to make the uh, measurement without any magnification. But again, remember to use sun shades. Sight reduction. Once you make this measurement, you've got to compare it to the angle that you would have measured if you were precisely where you think you are. That can be done with those equations or it can be done with Agiton's tables. Agiton was a Naval Academy student in 1932, uh, figured out these tables, which are quite convenient in that they're compact. There's other sight reduction tables that are physically a lot larger, but they don't require you to have a calculator or anything like that. So here's a look at the Link A-12 aircraft bubble sextant. Because the airman does not have a horizon, the sextant uses a bubble. This is the same type of sextant that Dutch Kirk used to uh, pilot or to navigate the Enola Gay to its target in Japan. Here is that little card, which is the uh, still says War Department. It's clearly from the 1940s. This is sextant case. Here's the sextant. It has several bubble housings where um, that would be used to determine the level. You know that the sextant is actually level. It's got this plastic drum where the angles are marked so that they can go back and be averaged or read later. Here is the bubble housing installed in the sextant. And here is the, uh, the little plate that is an A12. And there's also a uh, patent number plate for the US, Great Britain, and Canada. What you end up doing with this sextant, actually here is the, uh, the arc. And this is a shot of the, um, of the index arm with the vernier measurement. And here is a little trigger mechanism. So you push the trigger and it makes a mark on the drum with that lead. What you do is you can twist the drum, get the angle correct, get this star or sun or whatever in the bubble. And then you, uh, you pull that trigger, make the mark, and you need to note the time that the measurement was made. So again, here's the index arm and the vernier scale. And as I rotate the drum, you can see that index arm is moving. So what you would do is you'd look through and you would measure the angle of the sun or what have you. You'd put the sun in the middle of the bubble by twisting the knob. When you got it the way you wanted it, you would pull that trigger to make the mark. You have issues of acceleration can move the bubble if the plane is accelerating or experiencing turbulence. Uh, many of these planes had a hemispherical plexiglass dome called the Astrodome, you know, allowing you to use the... So the Link 12, A-12 required an Astrodome, and that gave the navigator in a pressurized cabin a clear view of the heavens. The Astrodome introduced errors of refraction. It also spoiled the streamlined nature of the aircraft, and it it fouled up the, uh, or it had the, a risk of blowing out in a pressurized aircraft.
So it was determined that a periscopic sextant would be a better situation. And the periscope uh, sextant is the uh, Fairchild A10. Here's a view of the A10 case. You can uh, remove the sextant from the case and it's similar. It has some similarities to the uh, to the Link A12 sextant. When you remove the sextant from the case, you've got the um, this trigger mechanism, and you have a plastic disc that records the angle. But notice the pencil lead, and when you push the trigger, it makes a mark on the plastic disc. This sextant to read the angle has a counter. and the counter is shown in the slide. As you would get the angle, it would, um, you know, the counter would increment or decrement appropriately and you could read off degrees and minutes. We hope you enjoyed this video. A link to the Celestial Navigation book is in the description. Thank you.